I kind of envision like colors and almost like video game graphics while making music. I am Jubilee. I live in Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan. And we are here at Mixpack Studios where I make music and I'm also a traveling DJ. I have been DJing probably for a living since maybe 2009. It wasn't something I was thought that I would ever make any money off of or like do as a career. I was just kind of a raver and going out every night and I wasn't I wasn't really doing a lot of drugs like every other raver and like doing what most ravers were doing. So I figured the only other way to get involved in such a scene was to start buying the records and buying the mixtapes. And it just kind of happened. And then I was living in Miami and then I moved to New York. And then I was on a lot of rave message boards. I started DJing like the basement of these drum and bass parties called Direct Drive that were in New York. And I would be in the basement playing like all different kinds of dance music. Because I was friends with so many drum and bass people, a lot of people were making music. So people like Proper Villains and Udachi were like, oh, let me teach you how to use Ableton. My influences are kind of all over the map. Power 96 in general, they had the lunch hour rush mixes and then the 5 p.m. traffic jam. That stuff was just basically this really quick mix of like, a half hour of all freestyle and all Miami bass. And I think that like my first album that I made, After Hours, was really like kind of a love letter to Miami, but I think that the second one that I'm making right now is more about New York. The new stuff I have, I have like a couple of daytime songs, I call them, and it's like, you know, some dance hall sounds. And then I have some really like acidy nighttime songs that you know, there's still some of the same elements and sounds in them, so like they kind of tie together, but it is very moody. And just like After Hours, there's all BPMs on there. There's no certain sound really, but that's kind of how I DJ. I really think that the style that I have hurts me and helps me in the sense that like, as much as nobody wants to be pigeonholed, people want to pigeonhole you really badly. It's like, oh, she doesn't play techno, well, she can't play here. And then you hear someone else's set and you're like, I play those songs. It's not like my style's only Miami bass. Like I've made dance hall, I play Afrobeat. I really like doing that and it kind of keeps me alive, but I think that it can make business a bit difficult. But it's also managed to make me stay consistent. I'd rather just stay consistent and just do what I do than, you know, blow up off because I decided to make a techno song or a trap song or like whatever. The studio is Dre Skull's studio, who is the founder of Mixpack Records. Dre Skull was my good friend, and then he was my roommate when he started Mixpack, actually. And we just kind of like did a lot of events together for fun. Popcom is a huge artist on the label, and Dance Hall has really like been a main focus with Mixpack. He's done records with Spice, with Tifa, like we've thrown a lot of crazy parties and crazy events and gone on crazy tours. And obviously the Red Bull Culture Clash was like a huge win for us. Culture Clash is a Red Bull sound clash that was in London. Several teams having a sound off and you have to get a lot of dub plates made. And what a dub plate is, is basically like your own custom song. It really is a competition on who has the best sound and the best dub plates. I think there have been a lot of key moments and I think one of the problems with me and doing this is everything goes by so fast that like you can't even think about the crazy things that happen to you. And obviously getting a residency on the BBC is insane. When I think about the fact that that happened, I'm just like, that's like, you know, the motherland of radio, how? And even little things like certain DJs playing my records and like, certain artists reaching out that they listen to me or even knowing who I am is pretty crazy. Like, and they booked me for her party after her documentary screened. And I was just like, she asked for me to DJ this, you know? There's just like crazy things like that. And, but everything moves so fast, you don't really sit down and take it in. And then like, when your friend is like, whoa, that's crazy. You're like, yeah, you're right. That's actually 
pretty crazy. Like, I can't believe that even happened.